Today, we're going to talk about why, if you visit Venezuela, you should probably bring your own toilet paper. Over the past several years, Venezuela has been having very high inflation. In response, the government has passed laws putting ceilings on the prices of basic goods, like clothing and food and toilet paper. The idea is that by lowering the price, these goods will become more accessible to consumers. In fact, the opposite happened. First, at the lower price, consumers ran out and bought more goods than they did before. Second, the price ceilings pushed the retail price of food below the cost to the farmer of producing that food. And likewise, they pushed the retail price of manufactured goods below the cost to the factory of making those goods. So the farmers and the factories simply stopped producing. The combination of more consumption and less production emptied the shelves in Venezuela. So in Venezuela, you can actually still buy caviar and fancy liquor, but it's very hard to find milk or bread or meat. Why? Because those basic foods have price controls, and those luxury foods aren't price controls, and they're still being produced. The same thing happened several years ago in Zimbabwe. They also had skyrocketing inflation, the government put price caps in place, and then you couldn't find basic consumer goods anywhere. Here in the US, we see this effect most strongly in the market for apartments. Some cities, like New York City, have rent controls that are intended to make apartments more accessible to tenants. But anyone who lives in New York will tell you it's had the opposite effect. It's almost impossible to get your hands on a rent-controlled apartment. People who would have moved out decades ago stay in their cheap apartments, and rent controls discourage investment in new housing units. Many New Yorkers think that the housing shortage is because of how wonderful New York is and how many people want to live there. But it's really an artificial shortage. The rent controls encourage people to move in, but they discourage an increase in the housing supply. Whereas Boston found that when they removed rent controls, there was a building boom and rents actually fell. So that's why you can find an apartment in Boston, but you can't get toilet paper in Venezuela. Who is that econ guy? I'm Patrick Walsh. I'm an associate professor of economics at St. Michael's College near Burlington, Vermont.